stunning beaches in the Maldives, a dream holiday destination where people come to relax. But there's no telling how much longer this idyllic location in the Indian Ocean will remain. If sea levels rise as a result of global warming, the archipelago could soon disappear beneath the waves. Scientists all over the world, including those in Germany, are looking at ways to prevent this from happening. One of them is Professor Hans Joachim Schellenhuber. The leading international climate researcher heads the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. He says as temperature levels rise, we have to adjust our behavior accordingly. The potential is there and we could do this without anyone having to lose out. In fact, on the contrary, more people could see a marked improvement in their living standards. But the mutual will has to be in place. That's why many years ago, the professor argued in favor of the two-degree target. The world mustn't get any warmer, he says. Otherwise, the effects will be catastrophic. The Coral Triangle in the Indo-Pacific Ocean boasts a fascinating wealth of creatures, a biodiversity that's unmatched throughout the world. That's why Kimba Bay in Papua New Guinea is a marine conservation area where destructive fishing practices are banned. An employee of the environment project, Mahonia Nadari, explains the dangers faced by the coral reef. One example, the garbage contaminating the oceans. Well, plastic bottles, they're actually probably 70, 50, 80 years to break down. Cigarette butts, people always take for granted cigarette butts and they, after they have a cigarette they throw it into the sea, 10 years. The German government has contributed some 2.4 million euros to help preserve this habitat for hundreds of fish species. This investment also benefits the local people. Since 2005 we have seen a, a significant uh, amount of change in the number of fish and also the coral has uh, regrown again, which is a good sign that uh, people in the community have uh, realized the importance of uh, conservation. And not just scientists are involved in the individual projects. Locals are also included to ensure lasting success. Let's take a look at Ghana, for example, where the country's oldest private university has been modified to be more environmentally friendly. This is a German environmental project with a clear goal, to free the university from all dependence on fossil fuels. The project also includes a new faculty building. It's a very climate-friendly building. In the first place, we don't want to have a high energy demand. The power demand is very low because we don't use air conditioning. It's all ventilated um, by uh, natural ventilation with uh, those ventilation blocks or um, louver windows, which are very common here. Architects installed a rainwater collector and a biogas plant directly behind the building. Wastewater is then utilized for the plants. And the resulting gas is used just next door in the canteen kitchen. Although the majority of the Earth's surface is covered by ocean, much of it remains largely unexplored. Pedro Martinez Abiso, a marine researcher in Wilhelmshaven, wants to change that. He's taken part in the worldwide project Census of Marine Life, catching fish such as this whipnose angler. There's always a lot of excitement on board whenever a net like that comes in full of big fish. We go straight to the books to see if it's a classified species or not. 
The marine biologist has also taken microorganisms from sediment samples. Identifying the expedition finds is painstaking work. There are still many unknown species in the ocean depths. It'll go on for many, many years. We've identified 500 new species in our project, but there are still many thousands more yet to identify. It may seem rather old-fashioned, but the best way to record sea creatures for the purposes of scientific research is to draw each and every part of them in detail. To the city of Stralsund in northern Germany now and the Oceanium, Europe's Museum of the Year in 2010. It's a place to discover the secrets of the seas firsthand. How did life in the oceans evolve? And how do humans utilize this immense resource? The museum provides answers to these questions, and visitors can appreciate the sheer size of the ocean's giants up close. The basic concept of this exhibition is really just to show the enormous size of these organisms, a size that people have little appreciation of generally. As we're going about our daily lives, we don't get the chance to experience the tremendous overpowering size of a blue whale. It may look idyllic, but the seas also harbor many dangers dangers that are being investigated in the Alps. The German Aerospace Center has been carrying out tests here on GRIPS, an infrared measuring device that listens for tsunamis high up in the atmosphere and can issue warnings before they hit land. The seal, um the aim of establishing early warning systems is always to minimize the sounding of false alarms. That's why we've got all these different sensor systems, systems that work independently of each other to glean as much information as possible during the early stages of a tsunami. The Potsdam researchers are dedicated to ensuring that a catastrophe like the one that devastated Southeast Asia in 2004 doesn't happen again. Bremerhaven is the headquarters of the Alfred Wegener Institute, the central port of call for international polar research. From the north to the south pole, from shallow waters to the deep sea. For several decades now, the institute has been investigating the links between the climate and marine ecosystems. This also includes recording the condition of the ice shelves and the speed at which they are melting. This has been happening for many centuries. But even over a period of a thousand years, bear in mind that in 100 years sea levels would rise by 70 centimeters. That's 7 millimeters each year. That's no small amount. Data like this is supplied by the Polarstern, or Polar Star, the Institute's research vessel. The Polarstern is soon to be followed by a new research icebreaker, the Aurora Borealis, a joint European project still in the model stage. Ich werde in February of 2009, German Minister of Education and Research Annette Schavan opened the German Antarctica Research Station from Berlin. Spirits out at the Neumeyer station were high. It was a warm summer day for there, just minus 20 degrees Celsius. We're very happy to be able to work at this station. More Antarctic style celebrations, please. Scientists are there to investigate the atmosphere and changes to the ice shelves and sea levels. The forecast from the station will serve to guide politics, business and society in questions of climate change. When it comes to the environment, it's imperative that political decision-makers now pursue the correct course of action.